12 says, fight the good fight of faith. The first thing to realize in fighting the good fight of faith is that you can't conquer what you don't confront. The first thing I want to say is that you can't conquer what you don't confront. And the fight of faith starts from within. <laughs> Many times we want to fight the fight of faith and we're thinking about things. We're thinking about blessings. We're thinking about fighting for a job. We're thinking about fighting for something external, which is all good. But the real first place <laughs> that a fight of faith starts is inside of you. And can I say something right here? The first enemy you are ever going to confront is not the devil it is the enemy called you the fight begins right here the first person you need to conquer or to fight with is you if you can overcome you you can overcome anything my goodness i'm going to say that again if you can overcome you you can overcome everything and anything <laughs> you're going you need the first fight is the fight with those habits within with that mentality with that mindset with that way of thinking with that propensity with that mentality my goodness and everything that inhibits the move and the power of god and the God way of thinking. Mm. Everything that inhibits the God way of thinking. These are things that you are going to have to fight. It starts from within. If you can overcome you, you can overcome anything. Before you begin to think of people or this or that, you've got to conquer from within. In fact, every, start, every fight starts from right inside of you. When you win the first the battle first internally that's how come that's when you can win the battle internally externally but if you haven't won it first right inside you cannot win it outside and secondly you have to realize that the fight of faith is an is an identity fight it's not a fight to make you become something it's a fight to make you manifest something that you already are. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in all, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are already blessed in Christ. So the fight of faith is not to make you blessed. It is to manifest the blessing. There's a difference. It's not about fighting for a blessing you don't have is about <laughs> fighting to manifest what you already have and that is so crucial to understand it is an identity fight it's an identity fight because you are not fighting to become something you are fighting to manifest what you already are you're fighting to manifest what you already are many times when we have a windows computer that becomes slow when it's new it's brand new it's very fast and all of that and at some point it becomes slow and then you speak to somebody and they tell you to reformat the computer and wipe the operating system and reload the operating system and optimize it and return it to factory settings and everything and you do that and while you're doing that you are not trying to make that computer a windows computer you are only making it trying to make it to function as what it already is every upgrade and every optimization you perform is still within the context of the identity of that computer you're not giving it a new identity it doesn't become a mac computer or it in the process of you doing all of that it doesn't become a linux it is still a windows computer so you are not creating anything you are restoring what was initially created by microsoft or by windows so exactly that is what it is our identity fight of our fight of faith first of all is of an identity fight but it is not a fight to become something because you cannot be you cannot be more legitimate as a child of God than you already are. 
it is a fight to manifest, not to become. Mm, that is so crucial. It is a fight for manifestation, not a fight to become, because you already are who you are in Christ. Oh, glory. You're already as accepted as you're ever going to be. You're already as loved as you're ever going to be by God and in Christ. You're already as legitimate, as legit as you are ever going to be. So this is not a fight for victory. It's a fight from victory. You are the defending champion. You're not the challenger. (laughs) You're the winner. Jesus said, cheer up. I have overcome the world. He has overcome the world and everything that is in it and he has given the victory to you to manifest that victory. So you're not trying to become something. You are manifesting who you really, really are. You are. So when you realize that, then you realize that, oh, I ought to be not fighting for victory, but fighting from a from victory not thinking for victory but thinking from the place of victory speaking from the place of victory acting (laughs) from the place of victory oh and it's a matter of identity it's a an identity fight because you cannot be as more you cannot be more legitimate than you than you already are my um, i my name is yemi adelaide i am the son of akin emmanuel adelaide that is it. I cannot go to anybody right now or to my own father or to my brothers and siblings and ask them to make me more Adelaide. I already am. That is the truth. You cannot really... The Bible says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, what an awesome statement. So you are the righteousness of God personified. You cannot be more right. You cannot even grow in that righteousness you can only grow in the righteousness consciousness so the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus is not scalable <laughs> your identity in Christ is not scalable you can't grow in that identity you can only grow in the knowledge of it <laughs> my goodness you can only grow in the consciousness of it not in it because you are already as Oh my goodness, you're already as accepted, you're already a child of God and you cannot be more, you cannot scale up your sonship. (laughs) You cannot be more of a son or a daughter than you already are. Why am I saying all of this? These are so empowering, these are so powerful, this is the revelation that puts gas in your tank. That makes you to be ruthless from within and to be genuinely ruthless. This is the revelation that makes you ruthless in your fight of faith. Knowing that you are accepted in the beloved. My goodness. And having an understanding of the love of God. The Bible says there is no fear in love. 1 John 4. That perfect love casts out fear fear for fear is a torment (laughs) this is so interesting god does not use fear to generate faith it is love the understanding of the love of god that generates faith the understanding of the goodness of god the revelation of god as a good god (laughs) ah that is unconditionally good that generates faith so christ said to us says to us then Cheer up, for I have overcome the world. (laughs) And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So every fight of faith you're ever going to fight is an identity fight. It's not a fight to become. It is you manifesting what you already are. Because God God has already put you in Christ. You, your identity is in Christ Jesus. You come, you, you position, you, your position you occupy in God is through Christ Jesus. <laughs> so when God looks at you, he sees you in Christ. And because he sees you in Christ, you have access to the Father through Christ 
you are in Christ. You are in Christ and Christ has overcome the world. Mm. What a position to be of authority in God in Christ Jesus. Because to fight a good fight of faith, you must understand that you have authority. If you don't understand that you have authority, you are going to beg for what you are supposed <laughs> to speak to. Mm. You're going to be you're not going to be deeply convinced that you have what God says you have, that you have what God says you have, and that you have who God says you are. <laughs> My goodness. So God has put you in Christ. He has joined you to Christ. So you have to begin to operate from that position of authority. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. This wrestle is not against flesh and blood. And that is so critical to know because you've got to understand also that you are not just flesh and blood. You have flesh and blood, but you are not flesh and blood. You are a spirit, you reside in a body and you live, You have a soul. Hmm. You're a spiritual person living temporarily in a natural world. <laughs> not the other way around. You should not be fighting then from the mindset of a street fighter, a gangbanger fighting against another rival gang. No, your mindset should be that of a law enforcement agent. <laughs> oh yes, who is putting criminals behind bars? The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. Mm. And the violent take it by force. Ah, that's Matthew 11, 12. You see, many Christians, you see, many Christians have this what will be will be mentality. Oh, we just kind of believe that God is in control. <laughs> God will do it. God will do it. God is in control. The question is, why did Jesus teach us to pray? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If it's will, if his will is already done. If his will is automatically done on earth, why do we need to pray for his will to be done? If it's, if, if God's will happens the other way, other things happen, like a night, the night comes and then the morning comes, and we don't have to pray and fast about it. 24 hours every day stretches up to 24 hours and then another day begins we don't fast we don't pray we don't ask god oh yes today was 20 hours let it be 24 hours tomorrow we need 24 hours oh god we never do that those things happen naturally but the will of god being done in the lives of men does not happen that way Divine plan and divine providence always requires human responsibility. When the Lord supplied manna to the children of Israel from heaven, when manna fell, they still needed to get out of their tents to go get it. That's the human responsibility part. When the wall of Jericho came down, the children of Israel had to march around it seven times for seven days. That is the part. God was not going to do that part for them. That is the part of the human responsibility. Divine providence always requires some human responsibility somewhere. You know what I found out with Christians? Many just believe what will be will be kusera sera. And some people just believe God is in control of everything. If God is in control of everything, why do we have evil all around us? I realize also that some some Christians, many Christians, I realize many Christians have this what will be will be mentality at different ratios and degrees. You find some people, they just believe it so absolutely. Some believe it like 40%, some believe like 60%. And depending on where you are on the spectrum, 
of belief of what will be will be you have to agree to take more responsibility somewhere and a good place to start is this a good place to start is to understand that this world is not running exactly the way god designed and intended it to run <laughs> it is not it's not running the way god intended it to run as a result things are not happening in the same exact order that god wants them and intended them to happen and that is true god is not running things perpetually absolutely here on earth god is not making choices for men and then forcing them to follow his choices that he made for men men are exercising their own will exercising their own desires and making their own decisions and god is not enforcing his will on people so things are not being absolutely controlled by god in this world and i'm saying that so so you can understand this there has got to be some intentionality to god's will being done there has to be a decision made there has to be a decision made by man for god's will to be done if we were living in a world where everybody is loving caring you know selfless not greedy you know not carnal then maybe god's will will be done automatically but that's not the world we live in we live in an evil world so every time you want god's will to be done in your life or around you there's got to be there's going to be some resistance and because there's going to be some resistance you are naturally going to be swimming against the current so there's got to be some fight there has to be a fight of faith and some intentionality to God's will being done thank you Jesus so it's so important to understand this it's so empowering to fight the good fight of faith knowing that God loves you knowing that God accepts you knowing that you are loved by God and that God is in your corner <laughs> My goodness. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold. Let me read that scripture again. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life. <laughs> to which you were called. My goodness. And that word eternal life, if you check it in the original meaning, the way it is presented in the Greek language is take hold of the life of the eternal one. <laughs> which is not a duration of life but a type of life or a kind of life it is not eternal life is not about duration it's, duration is part of it reigning with christ eternally but mainly it's about quality it's not a duration of life it's the life the trans the original translation means the life of the eternal one the life of the endless limitless one which itself means a limitless life abundant life so fight the good fight of faith to lay hold of the abundant life the life that god has designed for you the life that god has given you the life without limits my goodness my goodness the life without limit the life boundless life <laughs> limitless life my goodness god has given you that boundless life that limitless life in christ but you're going to have to fight <laughs> my goodness you're going to have to fight and insist on it you're going it's not it, it it doesn't come to you like the dew of the heaven it doesn't fall like manna from heaven it takes a fight it takes a fight my goodness and this fight is an identity fight this fight is and this fight is an identity fight this is a fight insisting this is who i am in christ <laughs> it's a fight insisting this is how what god has given me my goodness it's a fight where you tell the enemy that's not me when those negative thoughts come oh begin to flow when he begins to try to flood your mind with negativity you begin to insist that's not me 
I have victory in Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. Above only am I and not beneath. My goodness. Because God has given you this inheritance. God has given you this as an inheritance. It is your identity. It's a matter of identity. So, Refusing man. to be sick is a matter of identity. <laughs> Refusing to be broke is a matter of identity. Fighting against, oh yes, the, 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 the negative label that you've been labeled with is a, it's an identity fight. That's not who I am. Mm. Fighting against poverty is an identity fight. That's not who I am. My God. Fighting against discouragement and low self-esteem and negative thoughts is an identity fight. That's not who I am. God has given me life and He's given me life abundantly. I'm a child of God. This is an everyday fight. This is an every morning fight. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing is to redefine your, your sense of identity. If you have to carry an affirmation sheet where you read to yourself who you are in Christ on a daily basis, it's worth it. My goodness, this is an identity fight. Don't let the devil define you the way God has not defined you. Don't let the enemy tell you you are something that God says you are not. Woo! And don't let the enemy tell you you are not something that God says you are. It's an identity fight. It's an identity fight. Let me just pray with you if you are listening to me. Father, I lift up everyone who is listening to me right now in the name of